So now we're starting the collar of our shirt. Um, and of course we need to start with some measurements. So we've got our front neck here and our back neck on the yoke. If you're, um, and we've kept the neckline the same as the block, uh, just to make it the process simpler. But if you wanted to alter the neckline, um, on the PDF there's a couple of measurements there about how you can how you can alter the neckline but the alterations of the neckline have to be done before you make the collar so because if you work with the collar measurements of the, the neckline measurements of the block and then alter the neckline um, it, the neck the collar is not going to fit onto the neckline so always do the alterations to the neckline first before you do the collar so we have to measure um, measure the neckline. So our measurements that we've got here are for the front. Um, I've got I've got 12 centimeters, and that comes from the shoulder seam allowance down the neckline, past the center front, down to the fold. Um, and that remember the extension is 1.5 centimeters. So we'll just keep that in mind. So front neck 12 centimeters. Uh, including a 1.5 extension and back neck so our original shoulder there so the, our neck our uh, yoke line has come forward so from that point there around to the center back is 9.3 and they're the measurements we'll be working with so just to get us started we need and I'm not sure this is actually going to fit no, it won't fit on all one great. piece, but that's all right. So, yes, yeah, so I'll be making, using the measurements f um, to make a full scale piece here. So just drawing a line to begin with, and then we need to come up at right angles to this. And it's really important that you keep, you know, the right angles that you require really sharp with your collar because, um, you know, like if this is slightly off, it means the collar you know, pattern will go down or up, so you'll have this sort of like winged thing or this, you know, like that, whereas it needs to be, you know, straight, straight across. So from our center back, so I can't write upside down, let's just write center back there. And we need to come across our back neck measurement. So the measurement from our center back to our yoke line, which is 9.3. So 9.3 and then we come across um, to our center front let's do it we're following this so to our center front is 10.5 uh, so I come up 1.5 centimeters and we need to draw a line back so it'll be straight the collar will be straight to the shoulder notch here or, the yoke, or sorry the yoke it's uh, like a knee it, shoulder yeah exactly <laughs> shoulder point and then we just take this up nice and smoothly there so don't it's not an angle there's no mm. corner at this point it's just a nice smooth line up so from this point we're going to come up two and a half centimeters So you decide how big you want your collar stand. Um. Yeah, I mean, it, you can go. Just keep in mind that um, you know the the higher this gets, the closer it's going to fit around the neck. So that might be an instance where you'd make the neck a tiny bit bigger if you want a higher collar. So three centimeters at the center back. So we're doing a three centimeter stand. But that reduces. That stand reduces to our 2.5 oh, okay. so you can get it you can see it can't be coming thinner at the, mm -hmm. at the front here so it'll be three centimeters at least until the the yoke notch and then it goes um, smaller from there on some shirts that you see they actually take that line straight across so this only ends up about two centimeters here but ours is a little bit wider in the front mm -hmm. Now we need to come out, so our, ex our extension, so this is our center front here. We just need to add on our 1.5 extension. 
And now what we need, we need this line to come out, to start coming out at a right angle, and this line from our neckline coming up at a right angle, and then we need to curve this around. And this is a good thing, once you've actually done this, it might be good to grab somebody just to check your measurements for you, because mm. you know, there's quite a bit of work in a collar, so for you to have to go through all of that and realise that you know, it was a centimetre shorter than it was supposed to be can be really annoying. Yeah. So yeah, get somebody else to check your measurements for you. Mm -hmm. um, and remember too, because this, yes, when you're, when you're sewing this, um, you know, you have to have a right angle here because this is going to have a seam allowance on it and it inter intersects uh, with this seam allowance here. So, uh, you know, having a square there. So you don't, you know, don't do it really flat coming out at an angle and then do a quick like curve at the top or don't, you know, like have it coming bulging out and then around. Um, just, you know, straight up and then in gently into a mm. curve to meet the centre front again. And you have to remember there's a buttonhole will go in there. So if you cut that line too, too sharply, you won't have enough fabric to get your exactly. buttonhole in yeah. and get your button sitting nicely on it Because this well. is your buttonhole and you can see on the sample here. Yeah. Oops. So you can see how, like, you know, this is that length yeah. there and where the buttonhole is there. So just a, yeah, a nice, neat, smooth line coming in at a right angle at this point here. So there are different, as you can see on the PowerPoint, there are lots of different sorts of um, collars that you can have. And sometimes I think you almost have to do a collar to then, you know, and make it um, design wise to see then what you need to tweak because, you know, the way that it sits on the, you know, on the pattern piece isn't, um, isn't always the way that it's going to look when it's finished on the body. Um, so there's our, that's our collar stand, which we'll trace off. Now we have to do, we've got, what we're doing is we're using this as the base to create our, um, our collar. So the collar, yes, collar stand. So we're now creating the collar that sits over the top of that. So on the, the PowerPoint, I've just got six to seven centimeters. So it comes from the, the center front here, center front. So that's the point at which you can see here where the, where the collar comes out. That's the center front to give us that length there. And I've said that this is a, on here, just as a, as a rough, um, idea six to seven centimeters and you can see on the on the drawing here I've just come out like from the center front I've come out like five millimeters so say five millimeters there so from this point here through that point and then down so this length that I've just done is 6.5 centimeters so halfway in between those two and then we're making the collar stand uh, one centimetre uh, longer. Yeah. Sorry, the collar, yep, sorry. Um, one centimetre longer than the, um, than the actual collar itself. So the collar stand goes from here to here, the collar goes from here down, and we need that extra centimetre so that the, the, there's um, enough of the collar to cover up that line because we don't want to see the neckline. Um, and this is pretty much um, squared to, again, to the, the yoke line. Um, and then from that point there, it'll swing out into our collar. So there's our collar shape there. Okay, so there's our top collar done. So we've got our collar here. Um, I'm just going to cut along that center back there. And we're now going to trace this out and you'll see that I've got a piece of folded paper here. And... So this is another case where these pieces, we've got to cut two of them or a pair of them. So you really want a whole pattern piece. Exactly. It's, yeah, it's really annoying to do, um, 
to do, to do collars on, on the fold. Yeah, and especially when you have small cut pieces, too. So they're not accurate when you put them on the fold of the fabric anyway. So what we're going to do here, we're going to trace out the pieces. And this is good too because it means that you can leave, you know, your original construction. You can leave that as a guide. So if something happens down the line, you can come back and you can check it and to see, you know, like if, what mistakes you might have made with your measurements and such. So we don't need, apart from the centre back notch on the uh, on the neckline, we don't need notches on this top collar piece at all. So with the tracing wheel, trace traced out the top collar. And then we're adding six centimeters, six, sorry, six <laughs> millimeters. Um, so these are full scale, obviously, the seam allowances that I'm adding here. So there's our top collar. And then for our collar stand, again, be very precise with lining that center back edge up with our with the fold of the paper here just be really careful when you're working with the tracing wheel because it can sort of wobble all over the place. And you can put a weight on this too to hold it. And you don't want it moving around while you're doing it. Yeah, well the paper's not moving but the tracing wheel seems <laughs> to be moving a bit oh, yeah, and then just that make much. sure that you've yeah. got your your shoulder notch there and you don't need a centre front notch because you know you're not going to get lost between mm -hmm. the centre front and the edge of the collar there. Yeah. You'll be fine. I do need. Oh, yes. You need it on that edge. I need that notch at the top because that's where the collar mm. matches up. And that is that center front point transferred up onto the top. Yes, so before when I said you don't need a center front notch, you don't need a center front notch on the neckline, but you do need one um, up the top. Yeah. And that shows you where the collar comes from. I'll just say now to this point here where the collar matches up. Um, sometimes with th with uh, when I'm making shirts, I find that that this curve here, this 1.5 centimeter extension, isn't a lot. And then you know, so when you button up the shirt, the um, the points, you know, these points here can sort of like get in each other's way. So if you're finding that everything looks just like a bit too tight here when it's buttoned up you can actually bring this point here back half a centimetre um, just to open this up a little bit more and that would mean then that you'd need to bring this back half a centimetre as well and you know and reshape whether you take it back to that same point there or whether you you know take it off half a centimetre all the way along but um, that's an option as well so we've got our pieces here now it's very tempting and I think Libby in the past has been tempted yes, by this I've to actually I've just cut wires. around both ways <laughs> but because you're working with long slim pieces it's easy for the paper I mean you could I suppose you could potentially put staples in there to hold it together yeah. but I think even then you know it'd be a bit dodgy pieces, yeah. yeah so the way that I do my pieces 
Um, and I now do it this way too. And Libby does it this way too. And you should do it as well. Um, to get a much more accurate pattern really is to cut out the top layer very carefully. You know, and this, there's no way that you can really, I can hear people saying, oh, I'm just going to smash out this pattern. Please don't <laughs> smash out patterns. Patterns take a long time to do because they need to be accurate so that they can, you know, actually represent what you've got in your mind's eye in regard to your design. So, you know, the slower you go with it, the more precise you are. I mean, don't get paranoid, but, you know, just, um, you know, know that you're being neat and careful and accurate. You certainly can't smash them out in industry. <laughs> no, especially not if they're making 20,000 of them or something. Yeah, yeah, I have to be accurate. And I mean, this is where you can see if you've made a mistake. Um, you know, that should be a nice flow through, nice and straight. Through that exactly, that's what we were talking about before. Yeah. You know, like, this needs, these need to be straight lines because a right angle plus a right angle makes a mm. straight line. If um, you're out even a millimetre putting the, the edge of that half pattern piece onto the folded hmm. paper, if you're out even a millimetre, it creates a little peak. Exactly. So imagine, you know, like this here, if we put that there, you know, that's what we traced off. But if this was out, even a half you know, millimetre. like that's literally a millimetre. <laughs> yeah. And out here, you know, like we've already thrown it out yeah. um, a half a centimetre at this point here. Mm -hmm. So, you and know, like, you get, this little you get a little, little yeah, V and yeah, thing yeah. there. Yeah. So when it's finished, the collar's going to sit like that on top of the, on top of mm. the, um, the collar. So, yeah, so that's why on this edge here, um, on our neck edge, we have a shoulder notch, we have a center back notch, and then another, obviously another shoulder notch over here when we, when we trace it off. But on the top edge here, we have a notch that shows um, where the collar stops and then also the center back so center back notch there um, and then the grain line uh, like I was saying before grain line follows the length unless there's a reason for cutting it the other way if you've got a stripe or something that you want yeah, to go the other exactly. way exactly so if you had a striped mm. fabric the stripes would then go this way on this piece but if you wanted the stripes to go up and down on the collar, then obviously the you know the grain line would follow mm. the center back there. So yeah, so just just think about you know the fabric that you're using and the effect that you want to achieve. And then this top collar, so this will be uh, cut one pair or cut well actually cut two because you're just cutting two layers. You're not actually flipping it. Um, so cut two, cut one interfacing for the top collar. And the same with the collar stand. So cut two collar stands and one interfacing, which goes on the on the inside uh, collar.